to this video from a beautiful sunny London on an overview of data structures. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video I'm going to give you an insight into the world of data structures. We're not going to go into tremendous detail here but the idea is to give you this overview. Let's start at the beginning. What are data structures? They hold a collection of data in various formats and we'll go into each of these formats in a lot more detail in the later videos. Think of them as lists which look at the data in different ways. Each of the different types has its own advantages and disadvantages. The better you know your tools, the more likely you are to be able to select the right one for your particular situation at this time. Let's start off with a type that you've probably already seen. Arrays. Arrays are of fixed size. Once you've declared your array, that's it. That is the size it will be throughout the whole program. If you wanted to change the size of your array, you'd have to go through a complicated set of steps. You'd have to move the data into another array of the correct size. You'd then have to delete the old array, recreate it with the new size, and then copy the data from the other array back into the new version of the array you wanted. Easy! It's not. So let's look at an alternative. Well, collections are different ways of holding data. There are list collections, set collections, queue collections and map collections. And each of these is broken down into other types. The most common type we're going to look at is the list type. So each of the list types has specific things that it can do. It can get at a given item by its position in the list. So you could say systemout.println names 5 and that would display the sixth item in the list because of course all the numbering starts at zero. You can search a list for a specific value. So let's find Wix and lots have tried. You can iterate through the list. So let's go through this list and see which people are still current students. Or you could find those items within a specific range. So return the items in the list where the names are between, say, Pitman and Wix. This is the most common type of list, the array list. It has all the features of the list, so all the ones we've just looked at. And you can add and delete items at will, and you can do that in any position. So you could delete names 5 and add a different names 5 in there as well. Array lists are of a particular type, and the type is shown in angle brackets. So, for example, here we have an array list that will contain strings. You'll notice strings in the angle brackets. It's going to be called names, and it's a new array list. The angle brackets at the end of the new array list show the type, but since we've already said which type it is, it's string. We don't actually have to put anything in there, although you can put string in if you feel you want to. The round brackets show that this is a constructor, so it's going to construct a new array list. You can iterate through an array list using a simplified loop. An ordinary for loop can look a little complicated, but for an array list you can use something like this. So for string n, so we're declaring a new string which we're calling n, go through the array list called names. And in this particular instance all we're doing is printing out each name in turn. But we could have much more complicated logic in there as well. So the for loop is very much simplified. 
Let's move on to the linked lists. These have all the features of a list as well. They're faster than an array list. You can insert and delete just as easily, if not more so. But you cannot get at a specific item without working your way through the list. So it's no good knowing that Wix is the fifth item in the list. You actually have to go through the list to get to that item. You can create a linked list of a particular type in exactly the same way as you could for array lists. So what we've got here is linked list string names equals new linked list and that would create a list of strings called names. You can iterate through a linked list as well and you only have to use the same type of simplified loop. Because it's a list it comes with this simplified for loop. So this would go through a linked list where you have a string called n, the linked list called names, and we're printing out each name in turn. You could, of course, do far more complicated things in that loop as well. Now let's get on to some of the overview bits. The set type. This cannot contain duplicates. So, for example, if Wix appeared in there twice, when you came to print out the list, there would still only be the one Wix. You add a second version, that's ignored. The items and, uh, can be added or removed quite easily. And they're fast. Sets are quicker than lists. The order, though, is not necessarily maintained. So whereas for an array list or a linked list, the order in which you put them in is the order in which they're there, this isn't necessarily true for a set type. The tree set type orders the data though. So regardless of the order in which you put the data in, the tree set will leave it ordered automatically. We then have the queue type. This is an abstract class, I, one in which other data types have to be used to get the code to work. So, for example, you'd have queue string, so we're going to have a queue that contains strings, and we're going to call this queue, queue. And that's going to be a new linked list of type string. Notice that that's not new queue. It relies on the fact that there are other kinds of lists. We then have to have the data type, string, and the constructor. This time we do have to say the data type in the new section because it could be coming from something totally different. The queue type has add, peak, and poke methods, which all sound quite confusing. But imagine a queue in a shop waiting at the till. People can be added. You can check whether the next customer is there. Or you can serve that next customer and then they go away. These are respectively add, peak and poke. The final type is the map type. This is also an abstract class. In other words, you have to use it with some other data type. It's very good at the mathematical concept of sets. So you can find, for two groups, which items they have in common. You can find out whether one group is a subset of the other group. You can find non-intersecting items, so those which are not in common, and so on. A map type has a key-value pair. So, for example, you'd enter something like two and Fred. It must have both data types, although the Fred can be empty. The value bit can be null. Each key must be unique. So this is how it finds a particular item of data, using the key. Well, all of this has covered quite a complicated area very quickly. So let's have a quick review. Choose the right tool for the job. 
do not just use one type of list because that's what you wanted because that's what you've always used. Use the correct tool for the job. Lists are good for processing items. Sets are good when each item is unique. Queues are good for, well, queues of things. And that happens more frequently than you might expect. And finally, maps are good when manipulating sets of data.